Well, hello. Here we are again. <laughs> it's Arventura, and I'm M.B. Hanrahan, and I have returning guest <laughs> Phil Taggart, poet, cultural arts commissioner, <laughs> publisher of, uh, at one time, uh, the poetry editor of uh, Art Life magazine, and currently of a co-publisher co of Askew magazine, um, one of the directors, I guess, or founders of an ongoing spoken word poetry series still happening through the Artist Union Gallery every week. Uh, Phil, welcome back. Glad to be here. So what we, what we want to focus on is you as an artist, not just you helping artists be artists uh, and sharing your art with others. And you're a poet, and so I'd like to hear a poem. Okay. This is from my first book, which MB actually did the cover for. And, uh, um, this, and this is the poem that got me the book. Mm. Now this poem is about uh, body surfing with my son and his friends at uh, the beach down at the end of Seaward. And uh, I wrote it a long time ago, a long time ago, sometime in the 80s, I think. And it's called Surf Boys. Surf boys go be slick down fin. Board, body, wave, duck, dive, crack, back, envelope, quicken. Surf boys, dolphinized, glide, slide, vital eyes, vision, sky, water, earth. Form an ending, rail, dig, lip, infinite, tear, rip, on this wave, all seen moving, holy, 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 wave, altar which on is offered, body, balance, soul, answers, question. Surf boys, dolphin eye, revelation, impact, blue, drone, wave, tone. Oh. Splash. <sighs> so... I know that they're, not to categorize, but there must be some kind of like way that you would put poetry that seems to be based on words. I know it's all words, I sound so dumb, <laughs> but you know, based on like the, the way you use the words. Is, there, is that a form or? Well, that, that particular form, I was, it was kind of a language form. I was working out of a language, experimental uh, language form. And also you can really hear the beat element in yes. there. You know, I was uh, reading a lot of beat at the time, really kind of re-visiting re, uh, beat, the beat generations. Jack Kerouac. Uh, Ginsburg in that Ginsburg. one particular, yeah. Mm -hmm. And trying to, and so I, I just tossed that together with the performance, because I really enjoyed the performance at that period. That's when I was doing a lot of performance. The performance being like the chanting? The or? chanting. You know, at the time, I was actually wandering around with a bullhorn doing right. poetry. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I did that actually in one of the county, uh, county fair parades a uh, uh, long time ago. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and so a lot of performance of that period. And uh, uh, that particular poem got me my first book, actually. It's beautiful. David, David Oliveira loved it and, and, and got me a book. Beautiful. No, that's, that's, and so that was work, gosh, what, 20 years ago or so, right? And how would you describe, like, your more recent work? It, I mean, we're going to read a little bit more, but going from there to, does it always come from your own personal experience? That was very personal. And kind of had religious, almost making the surfing like a religious experience. Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, being raised Catholic, mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and the beats, you know, be, you know the, the beats that comes from the word beatitudes, which, you know, oh. so it's, it is, the beats were into the Zen aspect of it and the religious aspect of it. And in many ways, uh, well, listen to, read the Bible if you want to hear, you know, uh, good, good poetry. Okay, and making the everyday sacred. We'll just say that. Yeah, yeah. We so what I get to know about you, working on the gallery committee and being a, a colleague in art, mm -hmm. is that you combine photography, videography, 
and spoken word. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I've, I mean, I've gotten to see it, but maybe other people don't know about it. Well, you know, I, I work as I work in video, right, and have for many years. And you know, I I've been doing. I started did my first film when I was in sixth grade. Mm. So you know, I've been doing that for a long time, and. Uh, um, and, so, and then, you know, photography, of course, because I do video, you know, and just kind of works together. And although it's not the same, photographers, it's, you have to do the work. <laughs> so, uh, so I do that. And, and, what, and how this all came together, you know, uh, I, I had done video art. And what I did is I wrote a series of poems about my brother, uh, Rick, who's schizophrenic and sometimes homeless. And how that happened was that as I was, when I was writing the first book, I started realizing that I would find little bits of Rick in the poems. Mm. And, and so then at some point around, I'd say around 2000 maybe, um, I decided to write, consciously write about Rick. And, and in, in that process, I changed my language from experimental to very simple, simple language. Can you read us a poem? About Rick, I want you to continue to talk about that. Is, is it possible to, sure. to, to get a, a piece? Yeah. And Rick's still alive, we, may yeah. Must, we must say. Yeah, Rick's still alive. He <laughs> lives at the Leewood. He's, he's doing fine. Uh, he, he kind of operates on an emotional level, an intellectual level. of me. Emotionally, he's kind of a teenage boy, maybe a little younger. Uh, and uh, he's intellectually maybe a sixth grader, maybe, maybe a third grader. Does he know that... He's the subject of poetry and art. Oh, he loves it. That's you know, it. Well, I was really worried about it at first because I started writing about yeah. it. Then I started realizing, well, maybe he doesn't want me to do this. But what is? It's made him kind of a minor celebrity. Yeah. You know, and, and it's kind of and, and, and after these presentations, all of a sudden, everyone knows Rick now. Yes. He yeah. So interesting. And well, he likes it. And it, it kind of, yeah. The, this is another poem. Um, Rick is schizophrenic, and so he has uh, episodes, schizophrenic episodes, where he is. He, you can't he, he can't really deal with the outside world in 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 a very good way you know, and, he, and he just totally pulls away and starts ranting and you know he's not dangerous or anything but he's you know he, he can't really relate it's a different to me. reality it's a different reality but and but a couple days later he's fine and so this is a poem called two days later it's two days after his birthday which he had a really rough birthday we stroll the beach promenade, watch the storm surf. Rick tells me he can ride those waves and has. This is a good day. We walk and talk about joy rides in mom's car, swim meets, old friends long gone, the rainbows he saw when the cops beat him for sleeping outside, dad beating him, getting caught with Steve smoking cigarettes in the treehouse, a ragged, schizophrenic, tangent-driven dovetailing of events, and I fill in the blank blanks. While Rick's disease surfaced in high school, Dad was planning his no-forwarding address move, his shutdown alcoholic rage tempered by a blind Catholicism. Rick says memories of Dad aren't so good. I tell him they're not too good for me either. We watched the lifeguards warn surfers to move away from the pier. The brave ones ride way off in the distance, veiled by the mist. You're fortunate to have each other. Yeah, we are. We are. I think a lot of, a lot of these poems came out of, uh, you know, cathartic, you know, as a, my therapy, I suppose. And um, the other part of these poems is... I realize that people like Rick do not have a voice in the society. Mm. You know, they're the first ones who get cut in cuts. They're the, you know, they're, they get blamed for everything. You know, it's their fault. You know, it, they'll, they'll get blamed for if an economic, if a, there's an economic downturn, they're the first group that gets blamed because they're hanging around. <laughs> and, uh, um, and so it, this gives him a voice. This gives him a voice because he wouldn't have one otherwise. So your art form has gone into like a, a kind of a su subtle advocacy by just continuing to bring him up mm -hmm. in the gallery context. Is there anything, I mean, where else do you, how, how else are you putting forth this material? Well, what I did, I started doing, uh, I started, at some point I started taking photographs of Rick. 
And I think Rick is probably the most photographed person in Ventura <laughs> County, easily. <laughs> and so I was just started taking pictures of him. And what it was, it started off, he would take a picture of me, I'd take a picture of him, and then finally it just became, it's, you know, Rick, this is a Rick photo shoot. And I would take, I take pictures of him all the time. And, and I decided, how am I gonna put this in a way, and then I, I would interview him and how he talks. And so I put together a presentation that had uh, video poems. I did a couple of video poems, and then it would, it would, and, and you wouldn't, and then, and you wouldn't see me. All you would see is a screen. And then I took um, four dots of Rick talking, you know, four things, and put little boxes, and then had four uh, levels of him talking, and then bring that down so you would hear this this schizophrenic talk in the background, and then I would read the poems, and, on, and you'd be looking at the screen, and there'd be, you know, you'd be looking at pictures of Rick, pictures of Rick, pictures of Rick, pictures of Rick. Because he's, you know, he's really a fascinating guy. He's very funny, although you wouldn't know that. Oh, I've talked with him. He, he has a sense of humor, for yeah. sure. Yeah. What's next? What do you, I mean, you're going to continue with the Rick project, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. And yeah. What's, your, what's your next, uh, you know, do you go places for inspiration? Do you just wait for it to happen? How does that work? Well, um, yeah, you know. I big think, question. I yeah, think. no, it's a big question. But I, I think right, right now what I'm doing is I'm working on, a, a, I'm, I'm always going to work on the Rick stuff, you know, because, you know, he's there. You know, I'm, I, I see him three, four times a week. And, uh, um, and that's going to be a part of it. But I'm, I'm, I'm starting to go back and reclaiming my experimental stuff. I did a performance with John White down at, uh, I guess it was part of Pacific Standard Time, down at uh, Armory in Pasadena, mm -hmm. where I did a kind of an experimental poem with him. I'm working on uh, a piece right now. I'm working on two pieces, actually. One about stuff, calling it stuff. Okay. And then I'm working on a piece called Water. And, and, and what I'm trying to do is, is marry the, uh, the video with the words and the photography. Well, it's also a great medium for getting, getting the word out. People like to watch. They like to watch. Yeah. Um, Phil, one of the things that, that, that why I wanted to bring you on and bring you out to, the, to people is to point out that you don't work in a closet. What, what your work does is you take your experience put it through the poetry grinder mm -hmm. <laughs> and the video grinder and the photo, photo grinder and give it back to the public. Uh, why? Why not just read them to yourself? Well, I did read them to myself for many years, you know, and I did. But I, I think at some point I realized that I, I wanted to put this, in, this particular series out. And at some point I... Um, pry my ego, who knows? It's pry my ego. But, uh, you know, I also wanted to share a little bit of me, and, and I thought, you know, the Rick stuff, I think, is something that should be heard. And I think that, you know, I, and, and I like the poetry community. I think that poetry in itself, because it is, it's outside the marketplace, you know, there is no market for poetry. Yes, it's one and, of the original uh, nonprofits. <laughs> yeah, it's, and, uh, uh, you know, you do it, and actually, probably, so in, in, in that reason, you probably get really some very pure artists because they're Ooh. not doing it. I was talking to David St. John who teaches it at, uh, uh, teaches at USC and he said uh, he likes poetry because it's so pure. You're mm. not in it. No one's in it for the money. No one's in it for the money. You hear it here folks. Phil, you'll be back. Find you through <laughs> SQ Poetry, A-S-K-E-W. Google it. This has been Arventura. I'm M.B. <laughs> Hanrahan. That's Phil Taggart and we thank you. Thank you.